When the Imperial Japanese war machine advanced into the Pacific in December 1941, it was nothing new for the Chinese. They had already been fighting the Japanese for four years and trying to eject them from China for a further six. Chinese people were beyond done with Japanese expansionism, and this included Chinese living overseas. When the sizable Chinese diaspora in Singapore found out their age-old enemy was on the way, they formed a volunteer unit to fight them. This is the story of Dal Force, or Dali's Desperados, the Chinese volunteers who fought tooth and nail against the Japanese in Singapore. Singapore has a long history of Chinese settlement, with 76% of the country's current population claiming Chinese ancestry. Some of these ancestors escaped to Singapore following the repeated Imperial Japanese invasions of China in the 1930s. This meant there was a ready supply of Japanese-hating Chinese men and women willing to take up arms and defend their homes. Just as divisions existed in China, divisions existed in the Chinese Singaporean diaspora namely between nationalists who supported the incumbent Kuomintang government and communists who supported Mao, the future chairman of the Chinese Communist Party. Although these factions occasionally fought against each other back home, they got along well enough in Singapore. Since early 1940, Lieutenant Colonel John Daly of the Federated Malay States Police Force had pestered British officials in Singapore to incorporate a unit of Chinese volunteers into the British colonial garrison. He knew they would prove to be good fighters, but so did the high ups, who worried what might happen if they armed the communists. On Christmas day in 1941, they finally accepted Daly's proposition. Prominent Chinese businessman, Tan Ka Ki, took charge of recruiting nationalist aligned Chinese for his newly organized Singapore Chinese Mobilization Council. But after a glut of communist volunteers appeared, the colonial office permitted them to join too. They even released a few members of the Malayan Communist Party who had been imprisoned for terrorism so they could join the force. This motley unit was put under Dali's command and henceforth became known as Dao Force. Between 3,000 and 4,000 Chinese volunteered for service in Dao Force but only 1,250 were trained before the Japanese invasion. They were organized into eight companies of about 150 men and split along political lines. Nationalist companies generally got better equipment, all wore khaki uniforms and carried modern rifles as well as grenades. Each unit also had a Bren machine gun and plenty of ammunition. For the communists, it was a different story. They were to specialize in close assault and were each meant to be given a combat shotgun along with seven cartridges and a bayonet, though this didn't always happen. Also, it was BYO uniform. Right from the outset, Dao Force's situation was desperate. After the lucky nationalist units were armed, there was little left for everyone else. Additionally, few British officers could be spared to train the volunteers. The situation took a turn for the worse when on February 5th, Japanese dive bombers attacked the supply ship RMS Empress of Asia, setting her ablaze. She carried vital weapons and equipment destined to arm the Dao Force fighters, but these never made it to Singapore. The volunteers had to make do with whatever they could scrounge. Frank Brewer, one of the British training officers, noted, there weren't enough ordinary rifles to be handed out to them. I know one company had as many as three different types of sporting guns. This made it very difficult to try and teach the men how these things operate in a very short time. Many of the communist close assault units didn't even have the shotguns they were promised and were instead armed with parangs they picked up at the market. Training lasted between three and 14 days. Volunteers were taught to shoot, take cover and fight with bayonets. If they could hit the target, they passed the course and they were designated combat ready. When the media found out about Dao Force's desperate supply situation, they furnished them with a new nickname, Dali's Desperados. <laughs> 
Of the eight Dow Force companies, only four were combat ready when the Japanese invaded on February 8, 1942. Lieutenant General Percival, the overall British commander, believed the Japanese attack would come from Singapore's northeast and therefore placed Dow Force, his second line troops, in the northwest. Dow Force Company No. 2 was stationed in the modern day district of Lim Chu Kang. Percival got it wrong and they faced the brunt of the initial Japanese attack. Fighting with shotguns, hunting rifles and bayonets, the communists of Dow Force Company No. 2 threw all their weight into delaying the Japanese advance. In front of them was General Yamashita's 15,000 strong Imperial Guards Division. They had no hope of victory against such a force, but the Chinese volunteers battled on anyway. After nearly four hours of hard fighting, Dow Force Company No. 2 retreated. They had suffered 60% casualties and had only one officer left. They retreated with a neighboring Australian unit along Lim Chu Kang Road and swam across the Kranji tributary to take up position on Choa Chu Kang Road. They didn't need to worry about their ammo getting wet as they had none left. Meanwhile, another Dow Force company was deployed at the causeway alongside an Australian unit and an Indian unit. Rather than engage in battle directly, this company was ordered to act as scouts for the better equipped Australians and Indians. They were at the very front of Allied positions and were the first to engage the Imperial Guards Division as they crossed in rubber boats. Chu Kim Seng, a Dow Force veteran of the battle at the causeway, remembered firing on the Japanese with his shotgun as they approached, while his comrades reported the Japanese movements. Further up the Johor Strait, oil was poured onto the water and left to float downstream to where the Japanese were crossing. While they engaged the Dow Force Company on the shoreline, the oil was set alight and the fire incinerated Japanese boats. The Japanese were forced to fall back and regroup, and Yamashita considered postponing the attack at the causeway to deal with the Imperial Guard's substantial losses. He didn't postpone it, however, and the Japanese continued to steamroll over the Allied defences. Due to their positions ahead of the Allied front line, Dow Force suffered higher than average casualties during the invasion, but they inflicted their fair share of casualties in return. At the strategically important Bukit Timah supply base, Captain Richardson regrouped the surviving members of Dow Force and formed them into a new unit designated D Company. These men had been baptized in blood and were fully committed to halting the relentless Japanese advance. D Company formed part of X Battalion, a scratch force comprising Australian, British and Indian soldiers pulled together to halt the Japanese on the Choa Chu Kang Road. It was here that Dali's Desperados made their final stand. After running out of ammunition and facing a determined Japanese attack, the Chinese volunteers drew their knives and engaged the Japanese in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Bayonets were crossed and Katana met Parang as Dao Force made one final effort to push the enemy back. A valiant effort, but the Japanese had far greater numbers. Those who weren't cut down were routed. Lieutenant General Percival surrendered Singapore to the Japanese on February 15th, but that wasn't the end of Dow Force's story. Isolated stragglers from the four frontline companies buried their weapons in secret caches around Singapore and posed as local Malays. While the Japanese were focused on mopping up operations, the communist fighters joined the underground Malayan People's Anti-Japanese Army. They were joined by untrained volunteers who had yet to see combat. The blooded ex Dow Force volunteers became the nucleus of the prolonged insurgency against the Japanese in Singapore and Malaya. They remained a thorn in the enemy's side until the war's end. After the war, the returning British were eager to rapidly demobilize the guerrillas as they still saw communists as politically unreliable. No compensation was given to those who had continued the fight for roughly four years with the guerrillas, angry at this slight. After their years of hardship, many Chinese communists joined ex-services associations, which would eventually form the core of the insurgency Commonwealth forces battled during the Malayan Emergency of 1948 to 1960. Dao Force has been frequently commemorated in Singapore as one of the most dedicated units to fight against the Japanese invasion.
The founding father of Singapore, Lee Kuan Yew, described the unit in his memoirs as a legend, a name synonymous with bravery. That was the story of Dao Force, the Chinese volunteers who battled the Japanese despite their lack of weapons and training. But what do you think? Did you know Chinese volunteers saw combat during the invasion? Do you think the Brits should have spread the weapons between communists and nationalists more evenly? Why do you think some Dao Force men kept fighting when everyone else surrendered? Let us know in the comments.